Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom. I am Tamilore Akinkolia, and these are the headline stories trending currently. The president of the Nigerian Bar Association, MBA Yakubo Mikel, has called on the incoming administration at the federal and state government levels to initiate, strengthen, and focus on policies that promote inclusiveness, promote small and medium sized enterprises, and grow the middle class and prioritize the infrastructural development. The president made the call in his Workers' Day message. Nigerians on Monday while also lauding the resilience and steadfastness of Nigerian workers who despite the national challenges continue to keep the wheels of the country turning. He commended workers in both the public and private sector, the self-employed, the sole proprietors and entrepreneurs whose ingenuity and resourcefulness create employment opportunities despite the current economic challenges. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has vowed to reclaim his alleged stolen mandate in the court. Speaking at a stakeholders' meeting in Aqua, the former Anabar State Governor reiterated his commitment to exploring every legal option to ensure that he reclaims his mandate. Obi has contested in the last presidential election and came toward behind the president elect, but at the noble of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. The All Progressive Congress APC says Victor Gaidiom and Ali Overtimi Amechi, former Minister of Transportation, will remain the Vice Chairman in the South South Geopolitical Zone. The Zonal Committee had announced the sack of Gaidiom and Ita Udosen, its Secretary, after a meeting on Saturday. In a statement on Monday, spokesperson of the APC, Felix Mokar, says the action of the Zonal Committee members was not lawful and thereby null and void. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says it is planning to stop tracking the spread of COVID in communities across the U.S. Moving forward, the CDC is expected to relay more heavily on COVID-related hospitalizations, much like it does to track the spread of the flu. The agency is expected to announce a new tracking system within its coming week. It said the move away from the tracking community levels transmission is tied to the May 11 aspiration of the national public health emergency. And in business, the federal government has again postponed the reopening of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, saying the April 30th, the April 30th date earlier stated for completion of the project will no longer be feasible. The Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tide Fashola, made the appeal in a statement signed by the Special Advisor on Communication, Akin Belo, and made available to newsmen on Sunday. It says the development was due to epic traffic being experienced from Tollgate to the Karabri section of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And on Forisian, the situation in crisis in Sudan continues to remain tense, with rival military forces accusing each other of fresh violation of a ceasefire as a devastating conflict enters the third week. The truce was slated to end on Sunday, but the two warring parties agreed to extend it another three days. According to the country's health ministry, at least 528 people have been killed and 4,599 wounded since fighting broke out on April 15. But the UN says the death toll could be much higher. And on sports, after just a season in Dutch league with Ajax, Nigeria international Calvin Bassi is set to leave the club after a report that the club has received an offer of 23 million euros for the defender from a Premier League club. However, things have not exactly panned out nicely for the former Leicester City man as Barcy struggled to make an impact at Amsterdam with the club sitting third on the table. The Premier League club that is set to sign the Nigerian player is yet to be disclosed. That's all on the newsroom at this time. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.